Welcome to the welcome video for the hu studying the humanities at Case Western Reserve University. I'm Jonathan Sadowski. I'm from the History Department. And I'm Jim Sheeler from the Department of English. I think the most important thing we want to stress from the beginning is that studying the humanities at Case Western Reserve University is great. And there are reasons why it's great. That's not just something we say. The reasons why it's great are, first of all, um, we have terrific faculty, excellent faculty all across the humanities disciplines. We have generally small classes. You can get a lot of close attention. Um, but there's enough of a peer group that you won't, be, you won't feel isolated. We have all the great institutions of University Circle, the Art Museum, etc. If you're an art historian, you can go right over to the museum, right across from the quad to, uh, to look at the works of art. So there's a lot of real great reasons why it's great to study the humanities at Case. Um, I thought I would start by um, talking about one of my uh, classes. The first class that I teach is called uh, Introduction to Journalism. One of the first assignments I have students do is called Out of Your Element. Um, and the students are actually challenged to go someplace where they uh, feel a little uncomfortable or that they, they, they haven't been before. Um, so I've had a, a veg vegetarian go to a butcher shop to interview the butchers there. I've had um, uh, somebody who was scared of guns go to the shooting range. And one of my favorites was a, a big football player went to a Vietnamese nail salon to, to get his nails done and figure out the culture there. Um, and I kind of, that's, that's sort of uh, the way I felt in, in many ways when I first came to, to Case Western Reserve um, four years ago. So I was in many ways in sort of the, the same situation a lot of you are in. Um, I had never been to the mid mid Midwest before, um, never been to Cleveland. Um, and I, I told my friends in the beginning, I felt like kind of one of those, those fish that you, you sit in the, the top of the fish tank in the bag, um, waiting for the, the water to adjust. Um, but the strange thing was that, that actually it adjusts really quickly here, um, that people are incredibly friendly, especially in the humanities areas. Um, this is a place where uh, you will feel um, very comfortable um, very, very quickly. Um, you won't be out of your element. Um, and and I, I challenge all of you to, to, to take some humanities classes. Look down the schedule. Um, it, it, it can be an introductory class or it can be a 300 level class. Um, uh, the one thing we would, we would suggest is just to, to talk to the professors. Um, all the professors here are extremely approachable, very friendly. Um, office hours are some of our favorite hours of the day. Um, you can come in, you can email us, um, drop by for, for any advice on any class. If you're, if you're worried about how much reading is in the class, um, shoot, us, shoot us an email and we will um, send you the reading list. We'll talk about um, what your writing um, load is going to be. Um, but more than anything else, we'll tell you sort of what you're going to get out of the class. And in many ways, that's going to be uh, something that challenges you in ways that you've never been challenged before. Even if you think you've, you've taken, um, you've read certain books in high school, uh, when you come to Case Western Reserve, um, the professors here will um, We'll take those and and those 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 same books sometimes, and um, present them in ways that you you never would have imagined, and they're ways that uh, that will challenge you and um, will make you a better, more well-rounded person in general, whether you're whether you're thinking about going into engineering or whether you're going into one of the um, more math-oriented or science-oriented um, uh, disciplines. Um, really, really, we have all sorts of majors in all of our classes. And that's one of the great things about the humanities courses, is that we may have a, an English major and a political science major and a poly polymer chemistry major and a nursing major, all in the same class. And the, the diversity of uh, intelligence and different life experiences really adds to, to everything that, uh, uh, that we have here. As far as planning your courses go for the fall uh, and beyond, the Office of Undergraduate Studies can provide you with many templates of possible, of typical first year course schedules, and that's fine to follow that. But really looking at the general bulletin, that is the catalog of courses, you should feel like, you know, to use the cliche, like a kid in a candy store or um, a comics fan at a comic shop or a sports fan at a, at a, at a sports store. I mean, you should be looking and seeing what really appeals to me. What do I really want to take? What really interests me? And as Professor Sheeler said, uh, many courses that have higher numbers are open to freshmen. I teach the history of medicine. I remember I had a first year student in my History 395 History of Medicine class um, some years ago, and she 
um, she did fine in the course. She actually went on to do not just a BA, but a master's degree in medical history with me before she went on to the nursing, nursing school and became a nurse midwife. So look, try to look at really what you're interested in and, uh, and don't necessarily follow scripts. One of the, one of the common questions that we get um, is, is what can I do with a humanities major? What can I do with an English major? Uh, and, and really, it's, you, can, you can turn that question right around. Really, what can, what can you not do? Um, if you look at, at what our alumni are doing, it's everything from you know, sort of the traditional things you might think of as, as teaching, writing, um, but, but also expanding into law and medicine and um, engineering and all sorts of things that you, really you can do everything. We have executives at top companies who were English majors, um, broadcasters. Um, Actually, even just the other day, I was looking at um, you know it, it, the the humanities. If you if you look, uh, there there's a real resurgence in the appreciation for the humanities. Um, I just you know yesterday there was a a story that just says there's the the headline is a top medical school revamps requirements to lure English majors, and then that, that goes on to talk about all humanities majors. There's so many companies and um, uh, disciplines out there that are looking for well-rounded, uh, thoughtful students um, who are coming out and can think more about the larger world, and that's what all of the humanities classes do. Um, so that's why I, I would really suggest challenging yourself. And, and what you can do is, the, the great thing about, about um, a lot of the course loads here is, if you think that you want to take a history course or a, an English course um, or an anthropology course, you can do that, and it won't count against you. You, you, may, you may end up loving it, and you want to take a minor in that, um, in that field. Um, a minor is only five courses. And then you may love it so much that you may decide to get a double major, you know, whether your, your primary uh, major is, is engineering or English. Um, and so that's what I would highly recommend, is just, is just really challenge yourself, or anything that looks, that looks like it's interesting. And once again, you can call the professor or email the professor, stop by his or her office, um, and see if, if, it's, if it's the right place for you. Um, more than likely, it, it will be. You can, you can audit classes. You can come in and just stop by for a couple and see if it's something you might want to take the next semester. Um, so really, um, uh, feel free to, to talk to us. That's what we're here for. We actually did a study in my department. We pulled together some data a few years ago and found that, in fact, um, the earnings, the lifetime earnings of humanities majors tend to be higher than that for most, um, most strictly vocational majors. And the reason for that is that the humanities does prepare you for so many different things. And it's for many people, it's a pre-professional degree. And it can be pre-medical. It can be pre-law. It can be pre-journalism. Studying the humanities is a great way to learn how to shape an argument, how to use words to your advantage, how to sift through evidence and decide what's important about it, how to detect nuances of interpretation. And those are the kinds of things you'll be um, learning in humanities courses. All that said, I think it is also important to remember that um, these four years of your life are precious for a lot of reasons, and one of them is the chance to explore and grow. And while there's nothing wrong, of course, with um, thinking about your career, you have to and you should, um, there's more to an education than just its instrumental worth. And if you haven't, don't get that from a humanities education, um, then we're, not, we're failing. The key is that um, you know, along with all of these these skills that we'll teach you, um, you know, how to craft an argument, how to um, go up to walk up to strangers and ask questions that you you wouldn't have even thought of um, two or three years ago, um, we teach you how to how to how to form those into into stories. You know, how to really I mean, we're we're basically built on stories, and that's that's what um, the humanities is really talking about, and 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 showing you how to how to write your own story, how to how to live your own story, um, and uh, I think that. Um, if you, if you choose to, to take some humanities, humanities courses, um, you'll learn that uh, you'll be able to write a story all your own. One small piece of practical advice, really take advantage of the drop ad period. Go into the courses that you're interested in, seeing if, see if you like it. What's going to be more important for some of the courses is your relationship with the instructor and whether the instructor has a teaching style that's suitable for you and your ways of learning. 
if you find that, that's a precious thing. And even if it's not in the area you thought it was going to be in, um, you might want to go with that. And that's what the drop ad period is for. Go to more classes than you can take during the drop ad period, which is two weeks at the beginning of the semester, where you can go in, you can sign up for a class, and if it turns out not to be right for you, you can drop it. The other thing I like to encourage students to do, and I mean this, come see me. You can find me easily on the web page. The last name is Sadowski. And, um, just look at the history web page. Send me an email. Say, I saw the video. I'd like to talk with you some more. And um, you'll just find me in Mather House. We'll set up an appointment. And then once I know what you're interested in, I can either help you myself or find the professor in the university who can help you. I've been at Case Western Reserve for 23 years now, and um, I, know, I know the place pretty well. I think that goes for all of us. We're, we're all very approachable. You'll see, um, and I was intimidated at first as well coming here, you see these professors with um, all of these accolades. Um, but the thing is that they're, they're not intimidating. Um, it's, it's a very friendly bunch. And, and you'll see that also when you sit down in these small classes in the humanities departments. Um, in the English department, we have, I don't know, we have very, very few classes are, are more than 15 students. And you won't be in any humanities course in some giant lecture hall. Um, the, the, the professors know you, the students know know you, and um, it, it's a place where you really will end up feeling comfortable. I'm actually very intimidating, but I'm the only <laughs> one. Thanks so much for watching, and we will look forward to seeing you in class.